going on you guys this is Vicente and welcome back to the IV podcast channel and clicking by the title of it will Neve Campbell same scream seven can it save the franchise we're going to answer that today in today's episode a scream is such a beloved franchise by so many horror fans it literally saved the horror genre in the 90s from being a dying breed and just not being taken seriously that first scream movie when I was a kid scared the fuck out of me and I remember it was the first horror movie I could sit through as a kid through the entire thing and it scared me but I loved it and then here comes Scream 2 which was such an awesome sequel you know I had balls to kill Randy and put our legacy characters at risk amazing sequel and then we get Scream 3 whether you love it or hate it you can't deny that Scream 3 was a good ending to the Scream franchise because that's what it was planned for to be the ending of the Scream franchise and then a decade later we get Scream 4 making fun of reboots, remakes, and then almost another decade later we get the requel Scream 5 which you know has a whole new generation of a cast you know from legacy characters we get the return of Dewey, Gale, and Sidney Prescott I love them. Scream 5 I loved that first when it first came out but then you know over time it's just kind of like died down for me. I still enjoy it don't get me wrong I don't think it's a horrible film but I definitely see more problems with it than I did in the you know beginning and then we get at Scream 6, Ghostface Takes Manhattan, and oh my god, that was a good movie. Granted, it had a very, very bad third act, you know, it was just basically a rehash of Scream 2 with the ending, with the family dynamic, you know, parent becoming a killer, all that stuff, and where does that leave us? Scream 7, and boy, do we got a lot to talk about the development of Scream 7. Now, after the success of of Scream 6 at the box office for reception and just with fans we were expecting a Scream 7 announcement right away it was just kind of inevitable like it was doing good everywhere reviews box office everything but then we didn't really get news for a while I mean Radio Silence did confirm that yeah you know it's in the planning stages but it wasn't a confirmation because with Scream 5 with how big of a hit it was immediately Scream 6 got confirmed so we're just sitting here us Scream fans are just like where's Scream 7 you know and boy, we kind of got some bad news in the beginning. And then it gets confirmed that Radio Silence is not going to be part of Scream 7 because they're busy with their new horror movie, Abigail, which is also starring Melissa Barrera and some other good actors in it. And then it's kind of like a letdown because Radio Silence was doing a good job with these movies. And so that's just kind of the first half of these problems starting. And then we get the big unfortunate news. And boy... This is what pissed off a lot of Scream fans. And then just a couple months later, we get the announcement that Christopher Landon, the director of the first two Happy Death Day movies and the Freaky movie, gets announced as a new director replacing the Radio Silence. And honestly, I was excited because that's right up his alley, you know, with Freaky and both Happy Death Day movies being fun slasher movies, taking inspiration from Scream, you just knew that this movie was going to be fucking gold. Scream 7 was in good hands, but boy... That didn't last too long because this is where shit hits the fan really, really bad. And then it just seems like literally right after the announcement of Christopher Landon, fucking Melissa Barrera gets fired because she called for a ceasefire on her Instagram story and a spyglass media accused her of being anti-Semitic, saying she hated Jews and that she was being racist. And that pissed off the entire Scream fandom. And I was one of those fans. And it's just so stupid because... I looked at her story, and there was nothing about it that was so anti-Semitic. Anti even, I have a Jewish friend who even saw her story, and she, she did not agree with her firing. She thought it was stupid. She literally calls for a ceasefire for peace. How are you going to get fired for that? It just seemed like the dumbest thing to do. It, it was just so unfair, and it was stupid. The whole fandom was crying. You know, they were crying for Melissa Barrera. The cast of Scream 5 and 6 were her, and their Scream co-stars were coming to her defense, and it brought, you know, a joy to Scream fans' hearts, but boy, we got some more bad news, and it wasn't looking pretty at all. And literally the day after Melissa Brera gets fired, Jenna Ortega leaves Scream 7, and that right there just signed the death wish for Spyglass's media Scream 7, because... Not only did you lose, you fire Melissa Barrera and you pissed off Neve Campbell because you didn't want to pay her what she deserved, you literally got rid of a big star that attracted audiences and fans to your screen movies and Gina Ortega. And you know, granted, yeah, she's busy with the Wednesday series and many other projects, but that's where Spyglass Media fucked up. You know, they fired Melissa and then they lost Gina Ortega because of pay dispute. And it's like, dude, she's a big star. 
of course she's going to want a little bit of money, you know, and, and it's dumb because it's like, you didn't want to pay Neve Campbell that money, you at least deserve to pay Jenna Ortega that money, because everyone loves her character, uh, Tara Carpenter, and it was just a whole contributed mess. I remember just seeing so many posts that they weren't going to support Scream 7, and I'm one of those that's not going to support Scream 7, even with the recent announcement that we're going to talk about in just a little bit. And it's just not for me, because I don't know about the whole Palestine and Israel thing. You know, I don't know enough about it to have a say in it, whether or not I agree with either side. Uh, but I will say this, my heart goes out to the innocent victims on both sides, whether, regardless of their allegiance, innocent lives are being taken. That's what matters to me, and it hurts my heart. But it's just more about the whole freedom of speech for Melissa Brera, because like I said, she said nothing that was anti-Semitic and racist in her post or in her story. She was literally just calling for a fucking ceasefire for just peace in the Middle East, and Spyglass Media fires her because of that. It just shit's not making sense to me, and I feel like there's more to the story, and we're going to talk about that in a little bit because I, it kind of goes with the whole new announcement for Scream 7. And you know, Spyglass Media was trying to move out Scream 7. They were fucked. They didn't know what they wanted to do. They didn't know if they want to keep moving on with the whole new cast start over. And if they did that, they would have been screwed. That movie would have flopped so hard because you have this amazing core four. You know, and Jasmine Savoy Brown, Mason Gooding, Jenna Ortega, and Melissa Brera. They were so close. And that's what I loved about five and six was just their chemistry, especially in Scream Six, the core four. So it's like you lost Jenna Ortega and you lost Melissa Brera because you fired fired her over the dumbest thing ever. And now you're probably not gonna get Mason Gooding or Jasmine Savoy Brown because they're close in real life. They're this close. You know, they go to events together, they hang out, so it's like what do you do in a situation? The only time I would have supported Scream 7 is if Spyglass had the decency to sell the rights of Scream to a different company. Maybe Blumhouse, maybe A24, who knows? Just a company that would have taken care of the Scream franchise with just love. But boy, some news just got announced, and I don't know how I feel about it. I'm on the fence. And just a couple days ago, we literally get an announcement of Neve Campbell returning as Sidney Prescott for Scream 7, and that's not where it stops. Kevin Williamson is returning as director. He's the writer of the original Scream movies, and this is where I feel conflicted, because one, I love Neve Campbell as Sidney Prescott. She is my ultimate horror final girl. You know, as a kid, people my age, you know, when they were a kid, their first crush was Amy Jo Johnson as the Pink Ranger and Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. For me, it was fucking Neve Campbell as Sidney Prescott. She was my childhood crush. And I was devastated when she wasn't going to be in Scream 6. But honestly, I think that her character, Sydney Prescott, is just done. You know, like there's nothing else you can do with her character. So I felt like it was a good send off. You know, Scream 5 being her last movie because it was a literal passing of the torch. And then we get this announcement that Spyglass Media is bringing back Neve Campbell. And it raises a question. Why didn't you just give her the pay that she wanted so she could be in Scream 6 if they wanted her that bad? And it kind of raises a lot of red flags. And it's very fucked up because they're willing to give Neve Campbell their, her money that she deserves. But they weren't willing to pay Jenna Ortega the pay that she deserves. And I'm pretty sure what she wanted wasn't going to be as much as Neve Campbell. Because Neve Campbell is the face of Scream. Jenna Ortega is very popular. But literally, Neve Campbell is the face of Scream. So she's going to get a bigger pay than Jenna Ortega. So it's like... You didn't want to pay Jenna Ortega, but yet you're going to pay Neve Campbell all that money, even though you fucked her over in the beginning of Scream 6 when I entered production. I'm sorry, that's just fucking stupid. And this is where a little conspiracy theories are coming in from what I've seen on Reddit posts, Reddit forums, and just other YouTubers. So there were reports that, you know, Jenna Ortega for months, it was known that she was going to not be a part of Scream 7, and I, it was just going to be Melissa Barrera. And it kind of begs the question, this is where the theories come in, does Spyglass Media not have a lot of trust in Melissa Barrera to carry the movies? I mean, yeah, it would have sucked to lose Jane Ortega, but Melissa Barrera was such a good actress in Scream 6. Scream 5, 
Her acting was a little wonky. You can't deny that, you know. But she did what she could. She did the best she could with the script. But then Scream 6, she was fucking amazing. Knocked out of the ballpark. She was worthy of the final girl name. Not that already she wasn't a badass already. But she really brought her A-game for Scream 6. And so it's like, did Spyglass Media not trust her? Did you not think she was going to be a big star? And so were they just waiting for the perfect excuse to fire Melissa Barrera? And when she made that post about the ceasefire for Palestine, did they just like think that's her opportunity? Let's get him right there. We're just going to fire her, accuse her of being anti-Semitic and racist. And like I said, this isn't my own theory. This is one I've seen among Scream fans, um, Reddit forums, and other YouTubers. And I'm not going to lie, I'm not one for conspiracy theories because I think they're kind of stupid sometimes. But I kind of agree with this one. I mean, look at Radio Silence leaving in the beginning. There's something fishy about it. I mean, yes, they were busy planning their uh, Abigail movie. That looks like it's going to be a fucking hitter. It looks like it's going to be good. But there's no way they just would have left Scream 7 just like that. So there is more, there's more to the story that we're not knowing. And I don't think Spyglass Media fired Melissa Brera because of her ceasefire post. There's more to it. I honestly think that with them knowing that Jenna Ortega wasn't going to be part of the Scream franchise or Scream 7, they didn't believe in Melissa carrying Scream 7. They probably didn't believe in Mason Gooding and Jasmine Savoy Brown having bigger leads for Scream 7. And so they were just waiting for the perfect opportunity. And this, and like, it's all fucked up. It's screwed up. You know, like, Melissa's a good actress. I don't know what more she could have did that Spyglass Media wanted. And it's kind of weird because Neve Campbell, you know, got interviewed, I think, a month, two or three months ago. You know, and they asked her about Melissa Barrera's firing for Scream 7, and she said it sucks. You know, but she did mention that she would come back to Scream 7 under the right circumstances. And a lot of Scream fans were thinking that maybe her, maybe her right conditions that they bring back Melissa Barrera and they apologize because Spyglass Media needs to apologize for firing Melissa Barrera for the dumbest shit ever. They need to. And then fast forward to right now, it was probably because of pay. And look, don't send hate to Neve Campbell. You know, I get it. You know, we were all hoping that Neve Campbell would have stood her ground against, you know, Spyglass Media. But that's not her fault because at the end of the day, you know, she's an actress. She needs money. You know, everyone has to work for a living. And she loves the Scream franchise. She always talks about how she's thankful for that franchise for giving her her stardom in Hollywood now. And, like, I remember when she posted her post about how she got the script for Scream 7 and how she was going to return. And Kevin Williamson was going to return. And, you know, I was somewhat happy for her returning. Like I said, I'm not going to support Scream 7. That's just my personal preference. You know, I'm, I'm just saying... I hope she got the pay she deserves, but then reading the comments, a lot of people were just attacking her, and I hear that she's actually getting death threats, her and Kevin Williamson, and look, Scream fans, I love the Scream movies, I am passionate about them too, I don't agree with Melissa's firing, but you guys need to chill out when it comes to her getting a, her accepting the role in Scream 7, coming back as Cindy Prescott, it, it's dumb. You know, like, I don't know why you're attacking her. Like I said, she's just looking for work and she loves this franchise. You know, I'm not going to watch it, but I just hope it's a good enough script and movie to where they're going to honor Sidney Prescott and Kevin Williams. Because this is Wes Craven's baby. But like I said, I'm not going to support it. it. Just like I said, because the whole freedom of speech thing with Melissa Brera, I think it was a bullshit reason. And I think there's more to the story that we're just not being told. Because I truly think that Spyglass Media just wanted to get rid of Melissa. They were looking for the perfect opportunity. Because with Jenna Ortega not wanting to come back for months, as it was being reported, it was just being kept a secret. Spyglass Media just didn't believe in Melissa. And they just waited for the right opportunity. And unfortunately... They chose the dumbest thing ever. And it's going to come back and bite them in the ass. But I want to tell Scream fans this. If you don't think that this is just an easy way for Spyglass Media to save their own ass. By bringing back Neve Campbell and giving her the pay she deserves. And bringing back Kevin Williamson. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know. I get it. Every movie is considered a cash grab. But at least some movies are treated with passion. Just as much as a cash grab. Like I said... Movies got to make money. I get that part. But a lot of these movies are made with passion, especially with Scream 5 and Scream 6 when they had radio silence because they were big fans. But I guarantee the only reason why they brought back Neve Campbell was because he knew that if they made a whole new movie 
with a new cast, they were fucked. They were not going to make anything back. And this is just to save them, save their own ass. And it's ridiculous how people just aren't seeing that. They don't care about the franchise. They never did. It's just money for them. And it goes back to what I said. Yes, I get it. You got to make money when it comes to these movies. But at least treat it with passion. At least have some love for it. Some faith in it. Not just, oh, quick buck right there, fucking $3 million. Because then you're, we're going to get a crappy movie. You're going to piss away the fans. And that's how they're all just going to go run away. You could bring back Matthew Lillard as Stu Mocker. I'm not going to watch Scream 7. You can even bring back Jamie Kennedy's Randy Meeks, who got butchered, shouldn't be alive. You can even try to bring him back somehow. I just can't support Scream 7. Just because it started with Radio Silence leaving, that should have been a red flag for a lot of Scream fans, but we weren't really thinking about it. And then for months, it was just being reported that Jenna Ortega wasn't going to come back. There was rumors, rumors, rumors after rumors, because it was all about pay disputes and that she was busy. And then this whole Melissa Brera getting fired. I, there's more to the story, and I just can't support Spyglass Media because they're fucking up. They have such an easy franchise that they can make money off of, and it's a beloved franchise that people are going to watch. You know, and this is going to go out to any fan and content creator. If you choose to watch Scream 7... I'm not going to judge you because, you know, you can, maybe you can overlook it. Maybe you can understand, you know, that's just you. You know, I already seen other content creators or other fans attack others for still wanting to go see Scream 7 because of Sydney Prescott. And that's their choice if they want to see, you know, Scream 7 because that's Sydney Prescott. I'm not going to watch it, but it hurts because, I, of course, who wouldn't want to see Sydney Prescott return? Who wouldn't want to see the return of the beautiful Neve Campbell? Who wouldn't want to see it? And so, if you're attacking others for going to go see Scream 7, to me, it's a little fucked up. It doesn't, even, it doesn't make them racist. It doesn't make them anti-Semitic. It doesn't mean they don't support Melissa. Maybe they just love Sydney Prescott. They want to see her return. Because for a while, people wanted to see her return, especially in Scream 6. But, you know, like I said, there's just more to the story that we're not just being told. And I truly believe that Spyglass Media was just looking for any reason to fire Melissa and he just saw this opportunity and took it. Like I said, I could be wrong. This theory could be wrong. That was said by many others on Reddit and YouTube. You know, if we're wrong, we're wrong, you know. But that's going to do it. This is a little short episode I've been wanting to make for a while. Because I love the Scream franchise. Like I told others, even though Halloween 1978 is my all-time favorite horror movie. The Scream franchise, I adore I thank you for saving the genre for horror, you know, for reinventing the horror genre, for reinventing slasher movies, just everything about it. You just got to appreciate Scream for saving a lot of stuff and for bringing new horror fans, old horror fans back. It was just amazing and awesome. And just to see a franchise like this be dragged through the mud fucking sucks, dude. It hurts. And, you know, with Neve Campbell coming back, it's like I said, I'm mixed. I'm not going to see it regardless. But it sucks because I love Neve Campbell. You know, I do. I would want to see her return. I just can't support what Spyglass Media did, and it sucks. But like I said earlier, you know, if you go see it, content creator or fan, regardless, I hope you enjoy the movie. You know, I at least hope it's a good movie for Neve Campbell and Kevin Williams to return. But yeah, that's going to do it for this episode. Like and comment. How do you feel about this whole situation? Are you happy Neve Campbell's returning? You know, do you support Melissa? Do you not care? Let me know in the comments below, and we'll catch you next episode. Peace out, everyone.